Three, two, one. We have contact. There are already seven of us. Welcome, everyone. This is Dana with the Nose Nose. You are back in my home with this channel dedicated entirely to the more obscure, to the long forgotten, to the brand new but not yet known items in perfumery. And for today, I prepared something that a year ago um, was nowhere to be found, um, had been discontinued, but it looks like it's back. Hi, La Camiana. Welcome. Um, uh, unlike last week when we spoke for 40-something minutes, almost an hour, about the same thing. Hi, Strange Jim. Welcome from Clara Romania. If you log in, folks, please let me know when you're, where you're coming from. I think it's amazing to see we have a global village. I was saying that last time I rambled and you participated gladly, I'm assuming, um, for 40 something minutes, almost an hour, about the same fragrance. Today we're going to try to keep it a little bit slow, shorter. Hi, Carmen. Hi, Reluca. Welcome, everyone. We're going to try to keep it slightly shorter today. Um, and we are going to. <laughs> No, this is not working. Sorry. I was, I was, just, I was going to try to, you know, exercise some discipline. I was trying to organize my discourse. It's not going to work. Let's try it. Let's, let's try this again. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome to my home. This is a nose nose. I'm still Dana. And we're still going to be talking a lot about a fragrance that most people don't know about. I purchased this fragrance uh, about a year and a half ago together with two of its siblings. In total, there were four. There are still four uh, in the collection, the first of which was built in 2004, and the rest of which, three to be more exact, were composed six years after in 2010. Nothing has happened since 2010. It seems like it's disappeared from the market, or at least it seemed like it was disappearing from the market. But last night, when I was doing my research, after I had announced it, I discovered it's back. So you take this with a grain of salt. It's a line that disappeared and now is back somehow. Um, I have no idea what the politics of the house are, but I will tell you a little bit about the history. What I want to start with is this. This is a kitchen scale. All right. <laughs> this is a kitchen scale. And this is the fragrance I'm going to talk about. Bam. The reason for reason for which I purchased this blindly. Hi from Massachusetts. Welcome. The reason for which I purchased this in blind is because of the connection between this and this, which is the following. On and off. This is a kitchen scale. I'm going to try to show you how heavy this mofo is. All right. Uh, it's probably not accurate if I hold it. I'm going to put it down. And it says 1.130 pounds. All right? This is half a kilo, folks. Of which, I don't know if you see it. No, of course you're not going to see it. Like this. It's Now it's showing 1.126. It's 1.3 pounds of a bottle. Do you know what this means? It's half a kilo. You can kill somebody easily with this brick of a bottle. And this is precisely the reason for which my eye went to it. And I'll tell you where I bought it. Please don't hate. I bought this for $34 on Sears.com. Sears, for those of you who live outside the United States, is one of the oldest department stores, kind of like Macy's but older. Um, now it's like a cheap department store or accessible department store that also has, in collaboration with many, many other sellers, some sort of a marketplace online. Every once in a while, if you scrape the Sears uh, website, which is very poorly organized, it's hard to navigate, it's hard to search anything on it, but every once in a while you will find things that are mislabeled, that are placed in places uh, where they don't belong, and that's how I came across this thing. So this is, like I said, half a kilo. It's literally 
1.3 pounds. I saw this, I looked at the bottle, um, and I decided there's so much detail to it that it's worth buying in blind for $34. I purchased one, and as soon as I it came, I bought the other two um, accessible at that time on Sears.com for, again, $34 a piece. I got it home. I got them home, tested them all, researched them all, and found out that they were the result of a, one of those like weird market schemes where a big expensive store is no longer carrying them. In our case, Barney's, where it used to be sold for $178, $178 a piece. Maybe they got rid of their stock. They sent it to Sears. I have no idea what the mechanism was and how business works. I'm guessing this is a uh, gray market at its best, but this is how I got it. Bought from Sears for $34. I bought three of the four lines and then I started researching. The entire line is built around citrus. And I think the line in and of itself as a collection is very valuable and done with a fine hand. I was talking to Peter yesterday about that. Hi from London. Welcome. Mihaela, Liliana. Welcome, everyone. I was talking to Peter yesterday about what a fine hand means. A fine hand doesn't necessarily mean something completely original. Not, uh, not to me. It doesn't mean something revolutionary. Just like everything that's uh, uh, avant-garde is not necessarily also good, not just like everything that's creative is not necessarily something that's also wearable. Not everything that's classical in style or not revolutionary is bad or dated. It's not. In fact, I think it's harder to produce something that is within the classical means that's also fresh um, than to come up with some new crazy concept or new crazy ingredient and slap an avant-garde. This is experiential perfumery. Uh, it's so good. Just buy it because it's so original. And then you smell like a, like a, like a manhole. That sounded bad, but I really literally <laughs> meant a man manhole, right? That's what they're called. The things that go in the sewer system. Ah! So, to be surprised about a whole line and to be surprised about a whole line that is centered around a category of notes that I don't necessarily favor. I'm not necessarily into citrus. Come on. I'm not. Um, was very surprising to me. And so bam, bam, bam. It was easy. Purchased. I paid $100 for all of them. $102 because shipping was free. $102 for all three bottles. In the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, one of them went uh, to a swap. Another one went as a gift to my brother. And I'm hoping he still has a few drops of that. And the third one stayed with me. And I have to say from the beginning, this is not the one that I like the most. If you find this, because it's back on the market for $170. If you find this and you have $170 to spend and this is sitting next to its siblings, don't buy this. <laughs> but... I liked it enough to keep because I found it relevant enough to keep. So I'm going to talk about this and I'm going to talk about a, a bit about the rest of them from the line because I remember them all and I have notes. I take notes like library cards uh, many times. So I want to I'm going to talk about the line uh, all together and then I'm going to describe um, this fragrance as well. This is called Profumo di Firenze. Not to be confused with I Profumi di Firenze, which is a completely different brand from a completely different owner and from a completely different time. That one is a few hundred years old. This one appeared in 1954. As the name says, you might be able to see that on the bottle it says Profumo di Firenze in 1954. Um, like I said, the line has four fragrances in it. One is called Colonia Fiorentina, which means Cologne from Florence, and is the first one in the line um, uh, composed and launched in 2000 and composed in uh, 1954. That's why it says uh, 1954 in the bottle, but launched in 2004, which is exactly 50 years 
later. Um, that one is a musky, uh, very citrusy, very bright fragrance in a classical format. Very good and easy to wear. Um, and that's that. That's all I have to say about that. The next one is Cinquantaquattro. Cinquantaquattro means 54. And that one is a more aromatic citrus. Um, I have notes of rosemary in, in my um, library notes. I listed rosemary. I listed sage. Um, I listed wild, wild thyme. Kind of arid but citrusy at the same time. I found it very good. The third one is called Terra Rosa, which means white dirt, white earth, white, um, uh, red, sorry, red um, dirt, red uh, earth, red land, if you want. Terra Rosa, that's what it means in one word. Hello, hello, brother Lucas. Poland is with us. Um, and Narcisa from Finland. Hi, everyone. Terra Rosa is to my nose and to my sensibilities, the best of the line and one of the fragrances that I, I would rebuy. Um, it went as a gift to somebody. I think it's stunning. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful exercise in citrus, cypress, and vetiver. I actually believe the person who made this has a thing for cypress because it shows in a lot of his creations. And that is Enzo Gallardi. Enzo Gallardi is the head and the founder of this house, which, like I said, seemed to be discontinued off the market for a long time. Now back, I saw Terra Rosa and this one actually both at Barney's sold for $170. So they're back in Barney's. I don't know how these contracts work. Maybe they took a break and now they're back. Um, maybe the factories took a break and now they're back. Have no idea how politics and the dynamic of business works um, in this case. But um, um, but Enzo Galardi started this in 2004, like I said, taking over a formula built by his grandfather, Guido. Guido Galardi had this dream of being a perfumer. He never got to be a perfumer, but he experimented a lot. He created a lot of formulas, and he created a lot of methods and processes to extract uh, essences from the stuff that he was surrounded by in Italy. Um, that's why a lot of his um, uh, orange naturals are still in use today. So Guido, here comes Guido, Guido in 2004, la 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 picks up the formula from his grandfather, decides to bottle it in bottles that, like I said and showed you earlier, weigh about a pound, one pound of bottle. These are blown by hand. See this bubble on the butt? These are, these are, um, these are um, blown in a factory in Italy. Then somebody by hand sandblasts stuff. Then this is etched. It's very, very good quality. That's why, like I said, I bought these because it seemed like the de attention to detail was fantastic. The, the, the lid is very light and is made of wood. As you can see, whatever uh, wood this is, I don't know. This is an Italian wood. But the whole thing is built really, really, really tastefully and attentively. Like I said, tickled by hand, blown by mouth. There's a human behind every single execution of every single bottle. To me, that matters. And this time, I kind of put my money on the connection between the quality of the bottle and the quality of the juice. I won, I think, even though, again, this is not the one that I would recommend from the collection. I think this is the least sophisticated, the least uh, performant, but it's good enough to keep as a reference for citrus, like I said, and as a reminder of this house, which I respect tremendously. For those of you who don't know who Enzo Gallardi is, um, he's done a lot of stuff. More recently, he worked with Yoko, and you see those all over Instagram. If, if you're on Instagram, they have a very uh, strong 
influencer promotion going on. And you, you'll see there's a lot of presents for Yoko fragrances. Um, Antiqua Firenze is maybe the second newest uh, project he's been part of. Um, <clears throat> he also composed for Baldi. And back in 2008, started another house called Odori, which is kind of like tongue in cheek because Odori means literally odors, which in English sounds bad, but in Italian, actually in Italian, everything sounds good. If you say go to hell so that I don't have to say anything worse in English, it sounds good. Anything in Italian sounds good. But Odori, Odori in Italy means, I guess, sense, smells. Um, so Odori is, a, is another project that he worked on, um, and one of the best at Odori, uh, everything is better in Italian. Everything, everything is better. <laughs> I hate to say that, but it, it's true. Um, one of the best in the Odori line, which is called Liodori, which means the smells, is also composed around the Cypress note that I think, I feel, is Enzo Gallardi's signature note the way he operates with with cypress i think is quite unique and is quite um comfortable and it's friendly and it's like dolce far niente dolce far niente in italian means the sweet doing nothingness that state in which you do nothing and you like it but you're not a couch potato you're like one with the universe and observing the beautiful cypress trees in front of you i divagate Let's get back to business. So Enzo Galardi starts this in, in 1954 with four fragrances. This is the last of the four. Um, he, like I said, pays a lot of attention to what it looks like, um, to the details, even the packaging, which comes in this bright terracotta orange is textured. I don't, I don't keep the boxes, unfortunately, particularly with uh, fragrances I know I'm going to keep for myself. So I don't have it to show it to you, but it's a bright terracotta per, uh, orange. It's textured. It's uh, embossed with gold letters and it's almost 100% uh, recyclable, sustainable, um, recycled um, and, 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 and you know, natural dyes and all that foo-foo stuff that we have to start paying attention to. So Enzo Galati was doing this in 2004, a fact for which I commend him. And hi, Alex from Kishino, Republic of Moldova is with us. Um, and so my adventure with the house began. Like I said, I bought them for close to nothing. $34 is close to nothing. They were selling for $178, disappeared from Barney's, which is like a, a high-end um, um, store that sells niche. For nine years, there was complete silence. And last night when I looked to see what's up, I found it again on Barney's. So it's back in stock and back in sale. And I found... Somebody who reviewed it about a year ago, I didn't know about that review. I kind of um, failed to notice it. When I searched, there was nobody, but now I guess there is. And I haven't watched the review. It's much shorter than this. So if you want a reference point, you can you can go and watch that person. I don't even know what the channel is called because I didn't want to influence my thinking. Um, I would be curious to see what they say, and I'm probably going to go stalk them and see what their impressions of this um, are. Again, before I start talking about this, this is not my favorite from the line. I think it's the lightest. I think it's the simplest. Um, compositionally, if there is such a word, I think is it's, it's the weakest, but it's easy to wear. It's fun. It has the print of Enzo Gallardi and the rest of them. It makes sense in the collection and it's good enough to keep. Uh, if you find this alongside others at any price point you are willing to pay, pick the others, particularly pick Terra Rosa, which is, I think, close to genius. And it's one of the best fruit cypress vetivers. Call it what you may. I guess it's kind of like a woody... Uh, fragrance that I know the other good one close to genius I know of being life essence and a masculine from Fendi that's 
also long discontinued. But that's that another story, and maybe we can talk about it some other time. Let's talk about this. This is the fourth from the line. I said that many, many times, and it's called Dolce Prospettiva. Dolce Prospettiva means sweet perspective. And as the name says, Du Parfum, 100 ml, made in Italy, Profumo di Firenze, which means literally fragrance from Florence, of, not of, but from Florence. Um, as the name says, this is sweet, sweet perspective. This is the sweetest of the line, and it has a, a certain, from the beginning, a certain feeling of rock candy, right? Like that. Whereas the other ones are very natural, juicy citruses or citrus oil infused wood or some other stuff. This one from the beginning has the notion of confectionery, even though it's not as sweet as the, say, the name says. And when I say that, I put it in context with other sweets um, released in the past year. So if you put it in context compared to the other ones that are deemed unisex and not gourmand, this is not as sweet as that. But it does have the notion of lemon drops. Think of lemon, lemon bonbons, lemon drops. So it's tart, it's lemony, but interpretative lemon. It's sweet. It's somewhat crunchy, like, like that. And crystalline, you have the feeling of seeing through it, which is very interesting. I often speak of textures with fragrances. I know I confuse you sometimes because I give descriptions that have nothing to do with smell. But if we are to apply most, more of our senses towards something that we're trying to analyze, I think we're all going to um, have a better time, if nothing else. Maybe not a better understanding, or maybe yes. But we'll have a better time if we're explaining a fragrance as being melodious or... Uh, uh, you know, funny or, you know, anything. In this case, this fragrance is crystalline. It's like looking through glass. It's like raw candy, exactly like raw candy. Correct. Simplicity is key sometimes. It's very hard to make something simple that is fulfilling at the same time. Last week, I was talking about a very simple amber that's not sophisticated, that's half chemical, but it does the job. It literally pushes those buttons in everything I showed it to, including people who are amber fanatics, who are amber or resin uh, experts. They're like, yep, I get it, and it works, it works, and it's good. It's good because it works, not because of its intrinsic ingredients or because of its history or because of its name or because of its price. It just works. In this case, I do believe the ingredients are good quality, whatever's in it. Um, and I'll tell you what I feel. Right from the beginning, you feel a huge, huge blast of neroli, lemon with the peel, orange. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of uh, citruses. Orange, bigarad, which is bitter orange. Uh, it almost feels like um, orange water. You know what? The, the water that's left from distilling a product uh, for perfumery purposes. The water that drips from the alambic, from the ch -ch -ch -ch, while the rest is distilling. That's also... Um, used around the world. There's iris water, which I have and I can show you. Uh, there's uh, orange blossom water. There's anise water. There's vaguely anisic when they distill anison um, or anisic elements for other purposes. So that water that drips is also carrying some smell. And in a lot of parts of the world, that water is being used for flavoring drinks, for cosmetic purposes. Iris water, for example, is for um, for skin. Ashfaq, welcome from Bangladesh. It's late over there. Thank you for joining. And we're talking about a line that nobody knows 
about, um, unfortunately, but I think it's coming back. It was discontinued for nine years, to my knowledge. Um, <clears throat> and now it's back, and that is Profumo di Firenze. The entire line is made of four fragrances, and they're all built around citrus, citrus flower. I'm not going to say white flowers because they're specifically citrus flowers. And I think all of them have a little bit of uh, cypress in a very fine grained application. Uh, <clears throat> Rosewater for skincare. Correct. Daniela, welcome. And Kyle. Yep. If it works, it works. Pulp frags. Welcome. Um, so this opens... Hello from Bucharest. Hi, Wiki. Okay, good. If you've heard about it and if you've tested it, please let me know. I haven't found too many um, reviews on any of them. So, uh, and, I've, and I've been having it and talking about it since before anybody on my coast know, knew about it. So I'm, I'm happy to share. Um, also, because it's citrus. I don't talk about citrus. I don't have much citrus. I test a lot of citrus, but it just doesn't stick with me. This one did. And its sister brother, its sibling, Terra Rosa, is to die for. Absolutely stunning um, execution in, in a woody citrus and very, very citrus. It's fantastic. This I don't like as much or I don't love as much, but I respect, and I'm going to describe it accordingly. <laughs> so it opens with a lot of citrus, a lot of citrus that is easy to recognize. Um, I would venture to guess there's something that's called big, um, bergamot orange. Bergamot orange has kind of the same manifestations as bitter orange, but it's not the same thing, and it's not the same as uh, bergamot. You can mix citrus with citrus. That's how we ended up with so many kinds of citruses, where in the beginning there were only like two or three, pomelo being one of them. Pomelo is one of the oldest citrus that's kept its DNA intact since the beginning of time. Everything else, citrus, some sort of mandarin, and I don't remember what the third is. Everything else we have is a combination of these. It's kind of like breeds of dogs. All of them came from some sort of wolf back in the day. It's the same thing. If you didn't know about it, now you know one of those facts you'll never, ever use <laughs> anywhere. But it's a fun fact. All citrus comes from comes from the same root. This one um, has something, a mutt, that is not a breed in and of itself, but it's, it's an accidental breeding. Um, and I have it in the backyard. It's a very interesting, bushy uh, citrus. It's very hearty. It does the fruit is not very exciting. If you go to Bigai and you look look at um, bitter orange, that's a different story. It's settled. The fruit is meant to be consumed. It makes amazing preserves. The flowers we all know uh, uh, Bigarads, and it's been very popular for a long time. This one is accidental, so the fruit is not necessarily consumable, and it's not necessarily settled in a profile of aroma that you can do something with. But the leaves, and I don't know why it took me four years to figure this out. Last summer, I was desperate because it was so hot in California, and we host a lot. Every four, every, every other day, we have people uh, over. We have a huge yard. Um, so, yeah, about four or five times a week, we are with guests. That's the kind of love we like to live. That's why I'm trying to say everybody to everybody because uh, hello to everybody because you're in my house. So uh, last year I was desperate with heat and in serving water at the table, I usually drop things in that water from ginger to cucumber to whatever's fresh, right? Um, yes, it is. Particularly in Middle Eastern cuisine, rose water and orange blossom quite heavily because it's good and because it's not in your face and it's because it's not sour or acrid. It's just flowery and fresh. Um, so last year I took, this is a very long parenthesis, please forgive me. I took some of those leaves from this bushy, weird mutt of a citrus tree that I have in the backyard that we carried from New York 
where we grew it from a seed. <laughs> and I kind of crushed them with a something, with kitchen tool, and dropped them in the water. It's the best and the most amazing uh, citrusy smell I've encountered. Apart from lemongrass, this is completely different. So it's, and I found out in the meantime that it's called um, bergamot orange. That's the kind of very sharp, but not astringent. It's more like woody, completely, completely sharp, um, citrusy undertone. All of this comes smack from the beginning with this notion of crystalline smell that I told you about. Then it settles into slightly more flowery <clears throat> um, uh, middle notes. I would say there's some jasmine. There's a slight powdery um, back accord, whatever, however it's composed, I don't know. Um, there's also something a little bit metallic, like when you bite into a fork. If you grew up in the countryside or if you have grandparents with like, old school utensils you go visit and you go and it's like that it's it's like licking a battery a little bit so that's it's that kind of like metallic a little bit zingy type of thing and speaking of zing i believe this has a little bit of um ginger ginger makes things crunchy in my head and it kind of lifts uh them at the same time i believe somewhere in the middle there's a there's an accord comp composite accord that I believe has a little bit of uh, ginger, galangal, some, something around there. I would guess it's ginger because galangal is not something very popular in Italy, but who knows? Um, I also found, you know, vetiver and there's no vetiver in Italy. So maybe, maybe they reached laterally and went somewhere else for, um, for something to make this a little bit more round. I don't know, but that's what I smell um, in the middle. Um, so like I said, jasmine powdery, still a whole lot of neroli, metallic licking a battery, and um, ginger. I have not tried citrus macroptera. Use it for... I'm going to look it up. we got to look it up now. That's why I love the lives, because you can talk back, because we can learn from each other. I think this is fantastic. All right, moving on. Macroptera. Sounds like, a, like the Latin name of a bug. <laughs> Lepidoptera. Ah, uh, see, see. Um, all right, so this is, this is the middle phase. The middle phase kind of mixes up with with the top and slightly settles in the in in the in the base so the the, the transition is rather smooth um you don't have to yeah it doesn't it doesn't turn you upside down it kind of goes from one to another which is kind of nice um if you're one of those who kind of like it makes sense, but if you're not, and you smell it now, and you smell it in five minutes, and then you smell it in 20 minutes, still the transition makes sense. There's no huge difference between um, uh, one phase and the other. The base is finally um, sweet. The base gets sweeter as you go along. There's a vanilla in there, some sort of... Mm, some sort of natural vanilla, vanilla um, concoction. It's not an absolute. It's definitely uh, an infusion or whatever it's called when you put the vanilla in the um, in the alcohol. Um, there's musk, some natural, very fluffy um, musk. There's some lactonic uh, notes, notions to this, which makes it slightly creamy. Uh, lactonic, not in the not in the milk way, more like in the coconutty way. So it's a um, so it's a, a vegetal kind of um, mix, and 
something nutty, whatever this is, I don't know. But there's something nutty in it mixed with a little bit of earth, like eating dirt. So, Shatkora, got it. Actually, I need to write this down. Ha! And because I'm European and I'm old school, I write everything by hand. Shatkora. Got it. I write everything by hand and in cursive. Hi, Vali. From England. And Maria from Vulcha. So there's a nutty, earthy notion. And I'll tell you the, the closest I got to it in one ingredient. If there's any of that in here, I don't know. But when you are trying to break into a walnut with the shell, and it's dry, so it's, it's, it's old, it's been there for a while. When you break the shell, you get that kind of, it's like your mouth is full of dirt and dust and dry woods kind of thing while there's still a nutty element to it. So it's an interesting uh, combo. I haven't met it in one ingredient. I'm not saying that these come from the same accord. They might not. It might not even be there. I just I, I just go by impression. So there's a nutty in the walnut kind of accord. Um, very vague. And then there's a dirt, earth accord um, that for some reason, with very posh being... <laughs> What, what do you know? <laughs> what, what do you know? It was an accident. I have no idea how to how to say it. How how you say it. I, I don't know how it's said. I just have to say it to fixate it and have to write it to fixate it because I'm a iconic learner. I learn from writing more than from visuals or even smell. So, uh, this was Dolce Prospettiva. The, the overall impression on this is sweet, lemon drops, candy. It's simple, but the performance to me is quite great for this kind of, uh, of fragrance. Um, it sits well on the skin. It fuses with the skin, which is something I care about. The fragrances that fuse with the skin and then emanate as your body warms up or doesn't uh and some of that and, and some fragrances that kind of like sit on top of the skin and never ever fuse with your chemistry i think this one does the projection is quite large um i'm not sure what other reviewers do but i separate projection from siage in my head projection projection is how far something projects right you sit on the on a chair, you're not moving. How far, how big is the bubble around you? Sillage, au contraire, is what stays behind you when you're gone. So is there anything left in an elevator after you've gone? If I move, how far behind me is there a trail? Does that make sense? Sometimes some fragrances have a projection with a bubble that moves with you, but then doesn't leave any trace. And some fragrances are skin fragrances. They, you, they can only be felt if you sit on a chair very closely. But then if you move through a room, there's a trail left. And everybody's like, what is that? What is that? So I separate the two. My nose separates uh, longevity, which is pretty self-explanatory, from um, projection and from um, siage. This one has a projection of maybe half an arm. It's a small bubble. It does have sillage. It stays, it stays behind you. There's something in the air. It stays on clothes. It stays on hair. You move, you feel it in the air. Um, like right now, I can kind of feel my arm. But if I move it, and that's sillage. That's fantastic. Um, that was it. Profumo di Firenze. 1954. A, f a house that came on the American market in 2010, then disappeared um, about 2017, I'd say. It was nowhere to be found. I bought this in 2000, beginning of 2018 for $34 a pop. 
Now they're back at Barney's, 470. If you find them from, and you find all four of them, again, if you see them in a line for a price that you are willing to pay, uh, from the four, pick Terra Rosa, please. It's, it's, it's a superb, superb exercise in um, vetiver with cypress and good, good citrus um, uh, glue, if you want. Where do you find these fantastic gems? Everywhere. These ones I found at Sears.com at the beginning of 2018, and I bought them for the bottle. I knew nothing of them. There was nothing written um, anywhere. I bought them for the bottle because it looks the way you do, you, you see. And like I showed you, it's half a kilo. It's 1.3 pounds with the liquid in it. So um, I figured it's worth, it's worth, you know, the risk. I bought one, which happened to be Terra Rosa, which kind of blew me out of the water. And then I went back and bought two more. In the meantime, the other two went. I'm left with this, which is the least loved from the Connect collection, but equally respected. Um, and like I said, last night I did a, a, a search to see if in the meantime there are any reviews. And I found one video reviewer, um, wherever they're from. I think they review in, in English, but I didn't watch it because I didn't want to alter what I feel about this. Of course, after I'm done with you, I'm going to go stock that person to see well i am a complete nerd because yeah because it's huge it's it's a brick see this is what i did <laughs> um and that was it folks if you like this kind of nerdy facts about fragrance and perfumery stick around make sure to log in on thursdays when you have time and something to drink i'm still on my bucket of coffee um Tell others, uh, make sure to subscribe, you know, the whole shebang and click the, the bell either here or here. I still don't know. Click the bell because that's going to let you know when I'm back live. In the meantime, remember to keep it kind, but keep it real. These two do not have to exclude each other. And if you find out about good stuff, please do share. It's all about that. And I'm going to leave you. Thanks for joining. I'll see you next week with something oody, as in oud, as in real oud. And speaking of oud, wait, don't leave. If you were here last week and you saw my amber stuff, remember I told you I, I ordered something because I couldn't help myself? I ordered something else from La Sultan do Saba. It's called Bois de Oud. Um, and I figured, okay, fine. It's a chemical uh, wood. And maybe maybe it's like one of those fun to wear things. It's not worth it. Don't save your money. Don't order it. Somebody was talking about it last week, uh, saying that they found it somewhere. Don't. Just, just don't. It's, don't. I didn't have any expectations because chemical anything with wood in it is overdone and has been um but save your money save your money but next week i will be talking about real oud not that i'm an expert but i have a discerning nose and i have a real oud from my oud small collection that i think you're going to like it's going to be <laughs> keep it kind of keep it real folks see you around and...